I was saddened when I found out that I would be missing Robert Watson's farewell concert because of previous plans I had, but I wanted to take this opportunity to personally express my gratitude to Robert. After Glenkirk called me to be their senior pastor, Robert was one of the very first people to contact me and to let me know of his excitement and eagerness to partner together. Robert's love for the history of sacred music and my love for church history really synced together in an excellent way. I remember one time Robert did an arrangement of an ancient 5th century Christian hymn for his postlude. The very same week, I used that same hymn as a prayer at our evening prayers service. So Robert, thank you for your partnership over these last two years that I've been at Glenkirk and over the years that you've served as the organist here. We appreciate it, and I appreciate you, and may the Lord bless you as you move to Washington. May he make your path straight. May he give you opportunities to serve, and may you experience the fullness of his grace and blessings in this new part of your journey. You will be missed. God bless you. Well, good evening. We're really glad that you are joining us for this special night. Um, I got a chance to pray with Robert just a few minutes ago, and it is... Um, an unusual uh, but really blessed thing to be able to celebrate someone like Robert. Um, I've known Robert for uh, quite a while now. He's been with us for over 10 years and has been um, such a blessing. If you know anything about his music, you know his heart. Uh, but to know him personally and to have a friendship with him has been uh, quite a joy. And tonight, you'll get to experience a little bit more of his heart uh, through the music that he plays for us. We're grateful to be able to, uh, to gather together and celebrate him and celebrate what God has done through him in this place. Uh, would you help me welcome Robert Watson? Thank you so much. I can't tell you how much you all mean to me. And it's just unbelievable that it, in my lifetime, I got to be here at a church where I absolutely love everybody. You guys were all spectacular. And um, this little concert of mine, I want it just to be totally casual. I'll probably talk a bit in between a couple of the songs. And um, I think there's a video or something somewhere in the middle. And um, so just relax and enjoy just like we're in a living room together we're all just sort of hanging out and uh, tempted to just explain every single song because that would make the concert nice and long but i don't think i will do that just a couple of them but i will say about this one <laughs> this first one i'm going to do is called stand firm and it was written for somebody that i care very much about, cared very much about, that passed away not too long ago, and he was a man who uh, stood firm in his faith, and he was a good man, and so I was just inspired to write this piece of music for him, for his memorial, and so that's going to start the night off, and of course, all of the encouragements for all of us to stand firm. Here we go.
I actually, this one I wrote as, as a postlude um, for the church service, but I wrote it in inspiration from uh, reading the 23rd Psalm that, you know, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And another way to translate that is surely love and kindness follow you all the days of your life. And love and kindness is, is a sort of a more direct way to saying it to me nowadays, nowadays. But this is my love song to you guys too, as it was his love song to me. In case some of you wondered, sometimes I stick this little thing in my ear. Um, it's a click. It's like a conductor. Some of the pieces that I've put on, on computer here, the tempo varies so much that it's, it's hard to play without a conductor. 
And uh, so you'll recognize this piece.
in that, uh... oh, they're doing a video. Have you ever wondered about Glenn Kirk's pipe organ? Are those the only pipes? If not, how many are there? Or are they fake and maybe there are speakers behind them? Let's take a quick look. Most people think of this when they think of an organ. Actually, the pipes themselves are the organ. And this is the console. The console is the control center that sends signals to the organ and tells it what to do. When I play the organ, I sit at the console, kind of like an aircraft pilot. If we go behind the choir stage, there's a secret, locked, high-security door, and only a few people have a key. The first thing we see are the blowers. Well, this is what the blowers really look like. They're very powerful because they need to be able to provide enough air to a large percentage of pipes simultaneously. This is the ladder up to the pipe room. You have to be careful as the pipes are very easy to bump into and they can easily bend or break. So here are a few of the pipes. Big shiny metal pipes, big and little wooden pipes, and tiny pencil sized pipes. Some are odd looking with bow ties, hats, Starbucks cups, and some look like you can play games with them. There are a few odd-looking things that no one quite knows what they do. There are speakers to play the digital pipes and a subwoofer for the very low frequencies. Many pipes are in special rooms called swell boxes and the shutters open and close to control the volume. Our entertaining and informative tour now comes to a close with a spectacular view of the sanctuary from high atop the Glenkirk organ's golden trumpets. Uh, on that note, people wonder, what the heck are all these things? And I don't know if I get some kind of close-up, perhaps, of all of this, but what happens to make a sound on a pipe organ, each of these has its own sound. It's just like I pull that out, and one set of pipes plays. And then there's another one right here. I'll pull it out. I'll play the same notes. And so on. You pull, them, you pull them all out, pulling out all the stops, is what they say, and you get the classical sound like from a Bach piece of music. So that sounds a combination of those pipes that I was pulling out. And those were all flutes I was playing to make that sound. They all make sound the same way a flute makes sound, like blowing across a little embouchure thing. And, uh, and there are reeds, too, to make sort of trumpet sounds. And so combined, all of that, are you ready? <laughs> So that's just, <laughs> that's a whole bunch of little pipes playing all at once, like thousands of them. There are at least 4,000 pipes up there. Okay. This next piece of music, um, uh, Pastor Tim referred to it as an ancient hymn that he also that same day coincidentally was going to use. And this is that, that hymn.
The other thing some of you wondered about at times is why the computer? Well, as you, a lot of you know, I'm a film composer by day, no, by, by trade usually. And uh, so I write and orchestrate music and make all these orchestral sounds. And the computer enables me to play them along with playing with the pipe organ. So that's why I have that up there. I love that sound, the big growl kind of at the end. It's so great. Thank you. 
Many of you know that I have a very deep soft spot for the military, for those that have given their lives, whether in battle or where they're given their whole lives in service. And I love to honor them whenever I possibly can. And I want to say right now to those of you who gave their lives, to those of you that are here that are veterans or are serving, that I thank you. I thank you very much.
Folks, that about does it. <laughs> That's about is all I could come up with this week. But I <clears throat> would like to play just a couple of more tunes as, a, as an encore, but this will be at these next couple of songs.
you go ahead and have a seat. Robert, I need to tell you that um, I'd written a couple things, but what I liked about that last song is that that is your heart. And you can play the organ okay. <laughs> but what I appreciate and have always appreciated is your heart towards Jesus. The way that um, you are constantly trying to make yourself available to just serve other people on his behalf. And one of the things that I have opportunities every now and then to do funerals and memorial service with Robert, and he always wants to know about the person who the service is for, and he spends the time before praying through just what would be the best at that particular service before and afterwards in order to, to make sure that the love of God comes out and it's your heart for Jesus that I so greatly appreciate and thank you for. At this time, we have, um, I'd like to invite up the, the personnel committee, um, a couple of representatives from the personnel committee and a couple of representatives from the choir. And Robert, I think they have some official representation, presentations to make. And as they're coming up um, afterwards, um, I think Robert will be available out on the patio to, to greet you. Um, Kenzie is over in the Kidman area, and she has a camera set up, and if you want to film some type of tribute to Robert, I um, would encourage you to go over there, and she'll film that, and we'll give that to Robert as a, as a going away gift. So, Wayne? Catherine. Should we go over there? <laughs> I was told, I was told. Okay, where was, here. Okay. Whatever. It's called lighting. <laughs> Robert, on behalf of the personnel team and all the people gathered here, I just want to thank you for over 10 years of service to us and your inspiring music performances and arrangements, your steadfast support of the worship team every single week and your support of Eric leading that team 
And all of us just thank you for your attitude. What a Christ-honoring attitude you have. Humble and kind, so welcoming to everybody. And we wish you well on this daring adventure to the Northwest. <laughs> and again, we just thank you for being definitely a Christ-honoring servant of the Lord in this place. Token. <laughs> Thank you, Robert, for such a wonderful afternoon. That beautiful music just filled our souls. And the lighting that brought the, everything to light. Thank you, Nathan, for all the lighting. It was just a wonderful experience for all of us. We are the designated uh, second stream from the choir. <laughs> um, Clint's wife, Joy, is the president, and she is uh, in Arizona, so she couldn't be here. And of course, Bill wasn't able to make it up here quite as easily, so we get the privilege of giving you this gift from the choir. And we want to send you off. <laughs> We want to send you off on this new adventure that you're about to embark on and know that the Lord has um, a plan for you and we look forward to hearing about all the good things that you're going to bring to your new community and your new church. We will miss you immensely, but we look forward to seeing how your new home and new family is blessed. So thank you. So we're going to close with a word of prayer. I'm going to invite Eric and, and Wayne up. Um, and if you'll just kind of hold your hands out. And Eric, I'll let you lead. And Wayne, if you'll pray. And then I'll close in a few minutes. Eric? Sure. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Robert and for the gifts that you have given to him that he has so freely shared with all of us. Thank you for the ministry that he's had among us for these past 10 years. And Lord, as he and Carolee now uh, relocate to Ravensdale in the state of Washington, we pray that you would bless them, that you would guide them as they make this move, that you would help them to find a new community of believers where they can worship and, and minister. And we pray that you would bless them richly. Thank you for your faithfulness not only here in the years that he's been at Glenkirk, but also the faithfulness that, that you have in store for him and Carolee in the years ahead. We commit them to you and to your grace. And God, we thank you for Robert's creativity, for his heart for you and for others, for the fact that you um, brought him to this place to serve. I pray that you would uh, prepare that place for him to, to love the people around him as he moves to Washington, that you would give him many opportunities to continue to minister to people with his music, to, to share his heart with, with others, and we thank you for what you are calling him to. We ask that you would um, bind us together in our relationship with him, that we would, um, that this wouldn't be the end. We're saying uh, see you later instead of goodbye, and we thank you for um, the fact that you bind us together with your Holy Spirit, that we are one body, one church, even if we're states apart. And we're grateful for, um, for what you are calling Robert to. We thank you for these last 10 years and for all the moments, including tonight, where he moved us in our hearts and pointed us to you. We thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we just so praise you for this man of oh God, this man after your own heart. Lord, as has been said, just continue to open up the doors, protect them, lead them, guide them to a new home. Give them friends, give them a church family. And Lord, continue to give Robert just opportunities to just bless other people, not only with his gifts of music, but his gifts of prayer and his gifts of love. Lord, May he hear that well done, good and faithful servant every day of his life as it goes forward from here. 
May he hear you rejoicing over him with singing. And may he know that he always has a home here with us. And Lord, thanks. Thanks that the one thing that these 14 months have taught us is that distance doesn't matter. And so, Lord, may we continue to rejoice that we are in one family in you. To you be praise and glory forever and ever. And again, Lord, thank you so much for these last years. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and have a good night. And Robert, thank you.